Matt Leibowitz, welcome to the business. Cheers, thanks for having me. 85% of your customer base is under the age of 45. Why do you think this type of trading platform is so appealing to that cohort? Well, I think it's digital first and you know, the generations under 45 are looking for things that are just as seamless as the way they do everything, whether it be Netflix, Uber, you know, watching you know, TV or downloading something from uh, overseas. So I think it just makes sense for them to do it online and stakes an online brokerage. It allows you to buy and sell your shares easily. So it just makes sense for them to, you know, to, to, play the, to play the market the way they would in every other part of their life. I guess it's a new disruptor type of feel if you yeah. look back over a long period of time. But only a few weeks ago, Stake was caught up in the GameStop trading frenzy. That's the right. platform suffered outages. Will that happen again or what has the business done to ensure it doesn't? Yeah. Well, obviously we hope not. Um, you know, customers are able to still make trades and put orders in. You know, there's, there's systemic issues across both the infrastructure of the whole exchanges and obviously Stake was caught up in just excessive volumes, but we've put in lots of effort into you know, more technology, more infrastructure, customer service, and obviously also educating customers about how the US market works because it's entirely different to the Australian market. Uh, with your platform, customers don't have to buy whole shares, they can buy fractions of, of shares. Those uh, shares, full shares, are held with custodians. What guarantee do you give customers about the safety of their fractions of yeah. their shares and the custodians that hold them? Yeah, well, so fractional and whole shares are held in exactly the same way. The US system, the Australian system actually is entirely different to every other system really in the world. It's a, you know, it's a chess system. In the US and other markets, it's held by custodians with big banks, whether it be like Citibank, Bank of New York, Goldman Sachs. So our, we've just given customers a US brokerage account as if they lived in the US. So a fraction of a share is the same as a whole share. It's just all held by the custodian in one group. Okay. So no brokerage uh, with your business. What's the revenue model then? Yeah. So if you're in the US, you don't pay brokerage. It's sort of ubiquitous there whether you're using... Robin Hood or a Charles Schwab, they don't charge FX, you know, a brokerage on any trades and we've just brought that to Australia. So we make money, in state went money in two ways right now. We make money on the FX fee when you move Aussie dollars into US dollars and back again, not on every trade. And then we've got Stake Black, which is our premium account. So if you want to get sophisticated data or you want to get analyst ratings or trade on unsettled funds, you can subscribe to Stake Black. You mentioned Robin Hood there. How is your business different to that US online yeah. trading platform? Well, I don't think brokers are entirely different. They're pretty much all the same. They offer a utility to buy and sell shares. I think what stake makes stake difference is what we stand for, about giving international investors great access to the US market. And we speak to, you know, the 75% of our customers that have invested before, they want to get into the US market. It's been really difficult before stake. It was a bit of a novelty. If you bought Google shares in 2005, you'd be laughing now, but you couldn't do it because it was just full of forms, fees and complexity. And stakes has broken those barriers down for people to enter the US market no matter where you live. So we've spoken about how it's a younger cohort of investors. What are some of the risks for them using these sorts of trading apps where there's no financial ad advisor, they're perhaps just going it alone, spending their money, some might be crossing their fingers? Yeah. Uh, look, I think it, you, can't, you can never really look at the platform. Any investment you make carries risk, whether you're buying a property. Obviously, Australian property's gone up, but you know, if you're born into a mining town, in 2000, you may be underwater as well. Ultimately, the risk is in the investment you make, not in the platform. So people have to manage their risk no matter how, what they're investing in. I think what Stake does is we try to provide as much information as we can, whether it be those analyst ratings. We keep a trade count on how many trades you've made so you can determine whether you're over-trading or not. There's analyst ratings, as I said, there's price targets. There's all that data there. We can only give people access. That's our role in the market. Ultimately, the decision on what they buy and sell is ultimately theirs. Uh, Stake recently completed $40 million in funding. You currently operate in New Zealand, the UK and Brazil. How do you intend to enhance yeah. your offerings as a result of that capital raising? Yeah, so Stake was bootstrapped before and we invested our own money, built the product as if we were customers and we always focused on the customers. So what are the services they need? How can they get more out of their investing? And the money will just be deployed in that way. I think it's really hard to get great talent when you're a bootstrap business. You don't have the exposure and you don't have the, the capital to go and pay wages. But I think this gives us an ability now to get you know, great people to build a better product for all our investors and customers out there. Matt Leibowitz, thank you for joining us. No, thanks for having me.